Few things could be sadder than a person taking their own life. Yet unfortunately, suicide is more common than you might think. Saddest of all is the rate of teen suicide in the United States. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, suicide is the third leading cause of death amongst teens aged 10 to 14 and the second leading cause of death amongst those aged 15 to 24. Furthermore, data shows that adolescent suicide rates are on the rise, and in any given year, there are many more suicide attempts than there are completed suicides. A nationwide survey published in 2012 found that in the previous year, one in six teens had seriously considered suicide, and one in 12 had actually attempted it. So what makes this age group so vulnerable to suicide? What are the signs that someone might be having suicidal thoughts? And what can be done to prevent them from attempting suicide? This lesson will focus on identifying the signs and risk factors associated with suicide and also the steps that can be taken to intervene and potentially save a person who is experiencing suicidal thoughts. Let's begin with the adolescent age group and why the suicide rates are so high amongst teenagers. As you may already be aware through your own experience, there is quite a lot of change that occurs during the adolescent years, mentally, physically, and emotionally. Puberty alone can trigger the onset of psychological disorders like depression, which is a big risk factor for suicide. Many teens struggle as they try to establish their identity and cope with pressures from parents, school, and even friends. Bullying is also far too common an experience for middle and high school students, and in this day and age, cyberbullying takes this threat to new levels. Many risk factors exist that make a person more likely to experience suicidal thoughts. Health factors, like chronic pain or serious illness, mental health conditions, especially depression, and substance abuse disorders can increase the risk for suicide. Certain environmental factors can also increase the chances of suicidal thoughts or actions. Environmental risk factors for suicide may include prolonged stress factors like bullying and relationship issues, stressful life events like the death of a loved one, divorce between parents, or a bad breakup, even access to potential suicide weapons like a gun or pills. Finally, historical risk factors for suicide include previous suicide attempts or having a family history of suicide attempts. These risk factors have been associated with higher rates of suicide amongst teens, but possessing one or even multiple risk factors does not mean a person is destined for this fate. There are many healthy and constructive ways of dealing with these risk factors that do not involve suicide. If a friend or loved one is considering suicide, however, it is important to be able to recognize the signs of their suicidal thoughts. Someone who is considering suicide will often talk about being a burden to others, feeling hopeless, trapped, or experiencing unbearable pain. They may say they have no reason to live, that people would be better off without them, or that people wouldn't even notice if they were gone. Oftentimes, someone considering suicide will even talk about killing themselves or demonstrate a preoccupation with death. They might describe how they would kill themselves or gather the tools or weapons necessary to carry out their suicide plan. Suicidal people may begin to withdraw from activities they love or isolate themselves from friends and family. They may display personality changes or mood swings that range from depression and anxiety to rage and irritability. Their eating habits may change, or they may have disrupted sleep patterns in which they sleep too much or too little. Someone experiencing suicidal thoughts may engage in reckless or dangerous behavior or increase their use of drugs or alcohol. They may also begin giving away prized possessions or work on getting their affairs together, for example, writing a will. They may even begin to say goodbye to loved ones in letters, texts, phone calls, or last visits. A person who has made the final decision to kill themselves will often display sudden feelings of calmness that can be confusing to those around them. Sometimes people think that this calmness means that the suicidal person is recovering and are no longer in danger. 
Unfortunately, this calmness can mean just the opposite. If you suspect that a person is thinking about killing him or herself, there are a few very important things you can do to help. First of all, do not leave a suicidal person alone. Talk to them and let them know you care. You could begin the conversation by saying something like, I want to check in with you because you haven't seemed like yourself lately. One of the most helpful things you can do is ask the person if they are thinking about suicide. Contrary to popular opinion, asking someone if they are suicidal will not plant the idea in their head. In reality, asking a person if they're suicidal shows that you care about their welfare and that you take them seriously. It also gives them the opportunity to express their feelings. Most people who attempt suicide do not truly want to die, but simply want to stop the unbearable pain from which they can see no other escape. Despite their desire to end their suffering, most suicidal people are deeply conflicted about taking their own lives. Unfortunately, they are so blinded by their feelings of hopelessness that they can see no other alternative to suicide. Talking openly about suicidal thoughts can provide relief from feelings of loneliness and anxiety and show the suicidal person that there are people who care about them. You could ask questions like, when did you start feeling like this? Or, have you thought about asking for help? Be sure to really listen to the suicidal person. Let them vent their feelings of despair or anger. Try to be sympathetic and patient. Perhaps say things like, you are not alone in this. I'm here for you. Or, I may not be able to understand exactly how you feel, but I care about you and I want to help. Reassure the person that suicidal feelings are temporary and that help is available. If someone confides in you that they are having suicidal thoughts, they may ask you not to tell anyone else. Refuse to be sworn to secrecy. Even though it might feel like betrayal, notify a responsible adult as soon as you can. A life is at stake, and having the help of an adult could make the difference in saving that life. Certainly, that suicidal person would thank you in the end. Oftentimes, a suicidal person will claim that they won't attempt suicide. But if you feel in your gut that a suicide attempt is likely to happen, it is important to take immediate action. Call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK or call another local suicide or crisis hotline. It would also be appropriate in this circumstance to dial 911 or take the person to the nearest emergency room. Do not under any circumstances leave the suicidal person alone. Make sure they receive help from a health professional or suicide prevention specialist. Remember, most suicidal people do not really want to die. It is so important that they get the help they need so they can recognize that there are other solutions to end their pain. Once the suicidal person is out of immediate danger, it's important to offer continued support as they struggle on their journey to wellness. Stay in touch with the person, check in on them, and continue to remind them that you care. Your support is vital to their recovery. As you help a suicidal person, make sure that you are also taking care of yourself. It can be extremely stressful coping with the idea that a loved one might want to take their own life. Establish a support group for yourself that might include friends, family members, a teacher, counselor, or clergyman. Suicide is a serious issue, especially amongst young people today. It's important that the topic of suicide receives the appropriate level of attention so we as a society can remove the stigma attached to the act of suicide and help people discuss suicidal feelings more openly. Only then will we be able to get people the help they need and deserve so we can reduce the suicide rates and tame this epidemic that plagues our communities. <laughs>